Jeffrey Wynn Prince of the Kimberly Trip. Here we are talking about radio versus internet. Back then in the 90s, uh, when I was at Quad in Sacramento, um, radio was monumental. And I don't hear anybody saying that anymore. But now internet is monumental. I'm on Facebook all the time. And in my world, Facebook is funner than radio. Uh, what's your opinion on radio versus internet? Well, I think the reason that nobody is calling radio monumental is because that it isn't. I mean, at this point, it's kind of just a recycling plant, right? I mean, we're, you're taking the same four songs, not literally, but they're being... More like 20 songs. Okay, but they're being redone, repackaged, and it's marginalized mm -hmm. the entire thing. And I really think that it's just a dying entertainment format. The infrastructure is set up um, with no forward thinking whatsoever. Forward thinking is important. But you're right, I don't think uh, radio even sees its own future. I don't think there's any game plan at this point. It's just this, you know, I'm still a fan of radio. I like that there's someone at the other end when I turn on the car that's, you know, speaking to me and playing music. Unfortunately, the days of being able to listen to one station for more than two minutes is kind of gone. You know, I've got... 36 presets in my car. And there are times I will go through all 36 and I can't find anything even listenable. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm just getting old and I just don't think the new, the no, new music No, you know, is, that's not true because, first of all, we're all always getting older. And second of all, the music industry has always gone in cycles, up and down cycles. It hasn't always been profitable. Like, past 10 years, it hasn't been profitable. And that's because I think they put out lots of crap. What do you think about that? So, I think that people still want stars and talent. And they want something to be better than what they could do on their own. And I think something like Autotune that has come in, and I know Autotune's like an easy target, but that I think there's something deeper here. That when you take away that there is ability required to connect with an audience and you tell people that anyone can do it and then you really represent that by all the songs on radio being completely manufactured in the studio with singers that can't really sing and then even singers that can they want it to sound like that so they they marginalize the talent and I think the proof of this is that the biggest seller in the last God only knows how many years is Adele because she came along with an album that has great songs, great performance, it connects with people, and it connects with them without all of these, you know, these like tricks to create something that isn't really there. And I think that if radio wants to have a future and wants to survive, they can at least look at that model and say, why don't we at least do things that are authentic, that people aren't going to see through? Because why is some 16-year-old kid going to turn on our station when he can take an app from his iPhone sing into it and it sounds just as good as the crap that he's hearing on the radio. People want to hear the adults of the world. They don't want to hear their neighbor that can't actually sing. And I think that that really points to a lot of the downfall of the whole industry. I think Rolling in the Deep is one of the best songs I've heard in like a decade. It's insane how good that record is. Yeah. I mean, it's because it's authentic. It's a real song with a real message with a, just a real presentation. So, I mean... I mean, would you listen to radio a lot? I know that you used to listen to Quad a lot for hours, right? Right. And, I mean, it was one of those stations that almost was beyond music because it was more of a community spirit thing. So the thing is, it's like when you get into a TV show and you follow it from the beginning and you watch it arc and it's, it becomes, when you look back on it, a really big part of your life. You're like, remember milestones in your life depending on, hey, what, what part of happy days were they on when that happened to me? To me, radio was the same kind of thing. I had my introduction to radio, and then I had my KZAP years, where you knew every DJ's personality, and you mm -hmm. had a routine that you listened to. And then uh, when I was older and playing in a band, quad became it for me. And you know, I had my morning radio ritual where I hear quad, and then I had you in the afternoon, and then Giles after you, mm -hmm. and then going into the nighttime with whomever it was. Alley Storm. But there was, it represented something. It was like part of the structure to my day was my involvement with hearing Quad come back to me. 
that so, just does not exist. Why does that not exist anymore for you? I mean, do you give it a chance enough to know if there's good personalities, or well, is it just lame every time? You okay, hear it? to not put too fine a point on it, but how many radio stations even have real DJs? It's all automated, right? And you've got all of these stations where their big selling point is we don't have irritating DJs talking over the music. Well, that's what I'm listening to the radio for, though, is the communication. If I just want an iPod mix, I will plug in my damn iPod and have my iPod mix. I want someone else that is in love with music, that's a fan of music, to play stuff that they love, and then maybe I love it, and I'm opened up to a whole new world. It just doesn't exist in radio at this point. DJs don't play what they want. They follow playlists that are but, pre-planned. But that's even if there is a DJ. Yeah, you're right. All um, right. It's automated. My favorite station in Sacramento right now is 94.7. Because of all the stations, I will hear probably the most songs I actually like okay. in, at, at one sitting. Mm -hmm. It's still hard to, <laughs> to have that happen. Mm -hmm. But there's no DJs. So yeah. there's no communication. It's just, okay, they're, Your box. Right, they're at least playing stuff, though, that is new. So I can hear new songs that maybe I'll love and I'll go and I'll discover an artist. Because I don't have time to sift through a million things on the internet. So then why then... Um... Well, you just said it. You don't have time to sift through a million times things through the internet. But, I mean, I does, mean, does the internet have that potential? It does. The, the issue I have with the internet for finding music is the stuff that rises to the top. They had predicted a few years ago that you'd have these filters, kind of like radio was a filter. Mm -hmm. To get a song onto radio, it had to be goddamn good. So you, you weren't hearing, theoretically... Garbage the all the time. You were, yeah. hearing, you were hearing the upper echelon of what the music industry had to offer. Because at one time you had, I don't know, people like me yeah. picking the music. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't just generated by a computer and playlists yeah. for longer than 14 right. songs. But with the internet and where it hasn't gone is instead of a filter where all of the good stuff becomes more obvious, what you have is a video that's really funny or really sexual gets 4 million hits and that's what ends up being seen. I mean, mm -hmm. Friday by Rebecca Black. Are you kidding me? That's worse than radio. Yeah, it's so, kind of a goofball novelty uh, in a bad way. Yes, but that's but it was popular because it was funny. It got on Comedy Central, uh, or they talked about it on but their it was, website. But it was an ironic hit. Yeah. Uh, did you ever see um, the Will Ferrell movie, uh, The Other Guys? I don't think I did. Okay, so Mark Wal Wahlberg, he does this big ballet dance. I'm like, you can ballet dance? No. I just learned to I learned to dance like this to make fun of these other guys that were that were dancing like this. You learned to ballet ironically? <laughs> it's Rebecca Black was an ironic kid. She was, and uh, I mean she was an amateur and it obviously wasn't meant to be this polished big recording. Uh, it just accidentally got went viral because Comedy Central started making fun of it and you know, when you get a big media outlet like that, that talks about something, it's going to get lots of attention. So it created this waves and waves and waves of people telling other people. But the problem is the stuff that's getting attention is getting attention, I think, for, I don't want to say the wrong reasons, but not because of quality necessarily. I think people were laughing at that video yeah. more than they were going, wow, that's a good song. Yeah, but then... That's, that's what ends up in my inbox, whereas mm -hmm. what I want to be turned on to is really great music. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing that the internet has that the radio doesn't is that the great music's actually there. Mm -hmm. You just have to find you it. Do have Needle to be, in a haystack. You do have to be a treasure hunter, mm -hmm. and at this point I don't have quite enough time, so I have to rely on friends going, hey, have you heard this mm -hmm. band or this band, and then sometimes I'll hear something I really like. Well, I'm trying to create a filter with playlistresearch.com. It needs a lot more developing, but what I want to do is find the best indie music out there from every city um, in America, and then maybe go beyond that. Um, you know, like a top 30 for every city, because no one else has really done that besides Reverb Nation, and I don't know what their charts are about. The, Even though my band, Tangent Sunset's top 10. Yes, awesome. <laughs> Well, the Reverb Nation thing, though, is uh, they base it just on how many hits you get. Okay. Uh, yours is organic, because you don't do a lot of... I don't have a lot of fans. Go here, go here, go here, go here. It's people discovering you because it's quality stuff. But so many of the bands, I mean, they're just... They want to be on the chart, so it's... I get emails from bands. Click on us in Reverb Nation. Yeah. They want to be number one. Like me. Really? That's how you want to be number one? Yeah. By soliciting votes? 
uh, fake votes. So, yeah. <laughs> so I think both formats, I think radio and internet both have issues, mm -hmm. but I think that radio is a dying industry, mm -hmm. and I think the internet is a growing industry. So, you know, if I had to pick one, I think the internet will win out and radio will be a dinosaur. Yeah, I mean, I could see that very much being the case in the next 10 years. Uh, what I've been told by an engineer who knows a lot about the radio industry is that uh, eventually radio will be resurfaced, reserviced, meaning um, by the FCC. Like it'll just be, uh, the, the stations and frequencies will be reallocated at some point. Um, who knows, maybe to smaller um, smaller uh, signals, uh, you know, not instead of 50,000 watt stations, you know, it'll just be micro stations, community stations. Uh, but at some point, it uh, won't make sense um, for a radio station with a million dollar stick, you know, meaning a tower that broadcasts, um, <clears throat> to compete with a $30 website. <laughs> Which would you rather start at this point, a radio station or a website to showcase music? Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, we don't even, um, when we mix our record, the last thing we do are the radio mixes. Mm -hmm. The first thing we do is the iTunes mix. Okay. I mean, so our, our brain Priority. is already in that mindset. Well, we do know that radio airplay still can sell a lot of records, um, and that internet really hasn't been the catalyst yet in 2012 to, um, to sell a lot of records. And when I say records, that means recordings. Um, it's just a short word for recordings. Right. The thing uh, is, though, now, though, I mean, radio has always been kind of this brass ring for an indie artist, like mm -hmm. how do you get onto it? Radio. Mm -hmm. We're at the point, though, now where if you don't have that viral YouTube video or, I hate to say it, but major label support, mm -hmm. somebody pushing you onto the stations that they're somewhat involved in, mm -hmm. very difficult to have that happen. Much easier to have a, you know, a grassroots kind of thing where, you know, your fans on the internet, you know, spread it out to all of their fans because you have something of quality and then it picks up that way. What have, you, what have you found um, in promoting your music uh, to be the most useful vehicle for getting the word out about your music? For us, it's still the live show. Um, I think having a compelling live show gets people interested in the music, and then they go home, and they're not listening for us on the radio. They're typing in the Kimberly trip, and they're hearing the songs, and then they're buying one into iTunes. But usually their introduction to us is because a fan brought them brought it to a show. Uh, Jeffrey, we're going to have to wrap this up real quick, but real quick, you uh, have an album coming out with the Kimberly Trip, and it involves this chess set. Could you please d describe how this is involved with it? <laughs> um, well, we're not entirely sure. We do know, though, that the album is going to be called um, Unicorns, Glitter, and Heartbreak, and the night could be very easily altered into a unicorn, and there's something... Just, or use this night. You can probably be seen better on camera. There, there's something very appealing about the idea of covering this in glitter and making it into a unicorn that uh, Kimberly can wear. Or Take a closer with. look here so, this night. Wow. So it's almost a unicorn now. <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so thank you for the donation. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we traded. Yeah. I'm giving him my old chess set, and he's giving me a rainbow guitar strap. In fact, grab that real quick because I want everyone to see... From now Look on, when you, see, when you see me play guitar, you're going to see this strap and you'll know where it came from. Jeffrey Wynn Prince of the Kimberly Trip. Thanks.